Hi. In this lecture, I will be discussing the pressure derivative method for the analysis of pressure transient data. So the type curve approach for the analysis of well test data was developed to um, overcome the limitations of conventional semi-log graphical analysis. And we've seen that two flow regimes can be discriminated from, you can discriminate the well bus storage dominated period from the infinite acting radial flow. And then the data during the day, the test data for the well bus storage dominated period is also used in the analysis. The underlying principle of type curve analysis is that if the pressure, if the test data exhibits the same shape as a type curve in all three regions, late, early time, middle time, late time, definitely, or it implies that the reservoir is of the same type as that characterized by the type curves. Fortunately, this principle has its drawbacks. drawbacks. One, for a particular theoretical shape, a particular theoretical shape could be exhibited by different types of reservoirs. Now, so this brings up the, the challenge of uh, obtaining a unique solution. As shown in figure TC2, all type curves have similar shapes with very high values of the uh, well bore storage and skin characterization factor, which leads to the problem of finding a unique match by simple comparison of shapes and also for determining the correct values of probability, skin, and well bore storage coefficient. So one other drawback is that the semi-log and the conversion, the log-log plots as presented in, uh, for type curves are often insensitive to pressure changes characteristic of a specific reservoir. So the uh, pressure derivative method was proposed to address the problem of identifying the correct flow regime and selecting the proper interpretation model. Remember that one of the aims of um, carrying out pressure transient analysis is to be able to um, infer the reservoir model, well, reservoir parameters, and then infer the reservoir model from um, dynamic data. So, Bordet and his um, co-authors proposed that the flow regimes can have clear characteristic shapes if the pressure derivative rather than the pressure is plotted versus time on log-log coordinates. So the, the pressure derivative curve can identify subtle or characteristic changes in slope, which may be masked or are not apparent on the pressure time curve. So the pressure derivative type curve or pressure derivative um, approach offers the following advantages. One, heterogeneity is hardly visible on the conventional plot for uh, water's data are amplified on the derivative plot. Two, flow regimes have clear characteristic shapes on the deriv derivative plot. Three, the derivative plot is able to display in a single graph, many separate characteristics, which would otherwise, which otherwise would require different plots. Um, and um, you recall that for the analysis of infinite acting radial flow, we use the semi, uh, the semi log um, graphical plot. For late time, we use the Cartesian plot, of course, because it will give you a straight line on the Cartesian plot. We've seen that for the log log um, type curves would afford you discriminating between 
the real world story the wasted period and then the infinite acting radial flow. So it's what I presented so far gives the impression that you have certain plots which offer um, which are preferred for the analysis of certain flow periods. So the pressure derivative on one single graph would, uh, would display different characteristics which would otherwise require different plots. The derivative approach improves the definition of the analysis plots that have been presented and therefore the quality of interpretation. So the pressure derivative as um, defined by Rodet and his uh, co-authors is as shown below. You see that the pressure derivative, so this is the pressure derivative of um, dimensionless pressure with respect to the ratio of dimensionless time and um, dimensionless well bulk coefficient. And if you look at this D74, you see traces, you see that, you, you see traces of the, the background equation for uh, the regarding type curve. So it's been shown that the web story dominated period can be described by this. In fact, this is the equation that was um, so we've seen earlier that in the during the well bus story dominated period, the pressure behavior can be described by what we have in D59. And um, you recall that um, this equation was presented um, when we're discussing about the regarding curves. A type curve. If you take the derivative of um, pressure and the measureless pressure with respect to the ratio of the measureless time and the measureless robust coefficient, it would give you what you have in equation D75. And then you will, um, of course, this would be unity, this, this would be one. Since this derivative is one, it implies that if you multiply the derivative by the ratio of dimensionless time and um, dimensionless robot storage coefficient, this would result. So equation D76, Equation D76 indicates that a plot of the product of the derivative of pressure and then this the ratio versus this on a log log would produce a unit slope of a straight line during the well ball story dominated flow period. So this conclusion agrees with um, the one of the fundamental tenets of the Grigatin type curve. So also on the on the log log scale, if you if you plot the water de pressure derivative against the ratio of um, dimensionless time and the well bus storage coefficient, you would have a slope, a unit slope in during the well bore storage dominated flow period. So that said, so if we if we um, come back, the equation D61 is um, in an equation which represents the pressure behavior during the infinite acting radio flow, flow period. You will recall that this equation was also presented in the last um, in the last class. If you differentiate equation D61 with respect to the ratio of dimensionless time and the um, dimensionless well bus storage coefficient, you would have you know that the differential of um, lean x is one over x. So 
this, the bordered derivative would give you um, half of the inverse of, the, of this ratio. And if you simplify this, it means that the plot, and take, take note, this as a unit. So this indicates that a plot of the product of the dimensionless, the, the, the derivative of dimensionless pressure and then the ratio of dimensionless time and Weber storage versus T over C, uh, T, um, TD over CD. Remember that this was also what was on the uh, plotted against for the Ugatin type curve on the log scale, we produce a horizontal line at 0 0.5 during the transient flow period. Now, so let me recap. So there are two, we, we presented two features. The first feature is a unit slope straight line during the well bore storage dominated flow period. The second is a horizontal straight, uh, it's horizontal line, you can't say horizontal straight, horizontal line at 0 0.5 during the transient flow, that's the infinite uh, acting radial flow period. So as shown by equations D76 and D78, the derivative plot of, um, the derivative plot of this term versus the ratio of dimensionless time to dimensionless vapor storage um, coefficient for the entire test period would produce two straight lines, which are characterized by, firstly, a unit slope straight line during the well bore storage dominated flow period, two, a horizontal line at 0 0.5 during the transient flow period. Now, in addition, notice that the transition from pure well bore storage, okay, so I think we should take a look at that plot um, for better appreciation of what I am talking about. So let's, let's look at TC4. Mm, sorry. So this is TC6, um, okay, TC4, okay. TC4 is um, what we had on for the Gugatin type curve. So I can proceed. So in addition, notice that the transition from pure well bore storage to infinite acting behavior gives a hump with a height that characterizes the value of skin. Sorry, this should be um, TC6, not TC4. So this, this is it. This is the uh, pressure derivative type curve. So if you look at it, similar to the Bigelting type curve on your X axis is the ratio of dimensionless time to dimensionless um, web of storage coefficient. But on the Y axis, you have the product of the pressure derivative and then um, TD over CD. So it's characterized, so this is it. You see that the signatures at the early time here are similar to what you have for the Gugatin type curve, where all the curves are merging into a unit slope in the well bore storage um, dominated flow period. Now, this straight period, and this corresponds to, know that this is, remember that what you have here is log scale. So it is this 0 0.11. And remember for log scale, they are not graduated equally. So your 0 0.5 is somewhere here. So this, the horizontal line here is characteristic of the infinite acting um, radial flow period. So here, this is the hump that they are talking about which is influenced by the skin factor. So, uh, but it indicated that the data in this computer period is not always well defined. So for this reason, 
the authors found it useful. So what, what is usually done is the derivative type curve is usually combined with the gigantic type curve uh, by the superimposition of both curves on the same scale. Now the pressure derivative data usually uh, provides without ambiguity, the pressure match and the time match. While the, while this characterization factor value is obtained by comparing the label of the match curves for the derivative pressure data and the pressure data, the pressure drop data, you see that. So, so this is the pressure derivative data. Yeah, so on TC7, you would see the superimposition of the, the pressure derivative type curves and its characteristics. First, you see the unit slope. So you see that for both the aggregating type curve and the pressure derivative type curves, they all have the signature unit slope, the Weber story dominated area. So this, where you have the home, is the portion are dominated by um, skin. And then here, this is the um, 0.5 value indicative of infinite acting radial flow. So in general, the following four time periods can be identified on the log log plot. plot. That's if you are using the pressure derivative um, method. The first period is where well bore storage effect is dominant. You see, the well bore storage effect is always the first flow redeemed to appear. As well bore storage effects become less severe, the formation begins to influence the bottom hole pressure more and more, and the data points on the log log plot fall below the unit slope line and signify the end of well bore storage effect. You know, we also saw this for the Gugatin curve. As a rule of thumb, the time that indicates the end of the well bore storage effect can be determined from the log log plot by moving one to one and a half cycles in time after the plot starts to deviate from the unit slope. So from where the, the plot begins to deviate from the unit slope, you move one to one and a half cycles in time for you to uh, obtain the end of the well bore storage effect. And reading cor the corresponding time on the x-axis, this time will be estimated from these relationships. I've actually presented this one earlier in the course. So this in, um, dimension, di in dimensionless variables and this in dimensional form, where T is the total time that marks the end of the well bore storage effect and the beginning the infinite acting radial flow, that's the beginning of the semi log straight line. Now, C is the robust storage coefficient. The second um, uh, time period is the evidence of well and reservoir heterogeneity effects. So, the um, well and reservoir heterogeneity will begin to appear or influence the pressure um, response. So this behavior, usually when we, the well and reservoir heterogeneities we, we refer to are actually some uh, manifestations of skin. See, behavior may be result of multi-layered formation, skin, hydraulic factors, fissured formations. Um, these are, so based to simplistic skin to some formation effects, of course, I, and uh, naturally factored reservoirs is more of a reservoir effect. So the, the third thing is infinite acting radial flow. So between the well ball story dominated flow and infinite acting radial flow, there's a second, there's uh, a flow period which, in which the well and reservoir heterogeneities influence the pressure behavior. So infinite acting radial flow, as we've seen before, manifest as a horizontal line on the pressure derivative type curve. The last period represents boundary effects. This is late time, which we will go in later. Thus, 
many types of flow. So note, these four flow periods are the dominant flow periods. They are, uh, they are different uh, flow regimes. So thus, many types of flow regimes can appear before and after the actual semi-log line develops and they follow a very strict chronology in pressure response. So you look, look at this. This is a um, pressure derivative plot. It's also referred to as the diagnostic plot. You know. And note it's a log-log plot. The fact that you don't have the inner grid lines, this is a log-log plot. So what you have here, this is, the red is like a typical um, regarding type of pressure versus, or pressure versus time. And here, this is your pressure derivative plotted in green. You would see infinite active radial flow can be recognized as a horizontal line. This, the initial unit slope is well bore uh, dominated flow. Here, this effect of um, well and reservoir generators. And here, where you have the departure from the horizontal line, this is boundary effects. Now, so this is um, similar. The, the plot also that I showed in the, the previous view graph. But you see, with the slope, with the slope of the different flow periods accounted for, of course, this is the unit slope. I right? see where bus storage. This is a flow period we've not talked about. So here, the unique feature is spherical flow. I'll talk about that shortly. And here, this is the horizontal, this is where radial flow, infinite active radial flow is dominant. And here, this is the effect. This could be Richard. Here, depending on the signature, could be a closed boundary, could be um, could be uh, an open boundary recharged by an aquifer or injection. I will see some of these things shortly. So um, as I begin to bring to the lecture to the head and also um, our discussions on um, well testing methods, let's look at um, typical flow regimes. So what, what you have in the, in the view graph here is what you know currently when you talk about flow regimes, um, steady state flow, semi-steady state, steady state. But let's, so one of the advantages of using the pressure derivative type curves um, is for model identification. So identifying flow regimes which appear as characteristic patterns displayed on or by the pressure derivative data is important because a regime is the geometry of flow lines in the tested formation. What this means is that different flow regimes present different characteristics, different slopes. So you would see um, this was actually obtained from. Um, um, Slum BJ um, material and well test. So you see, you have different. So this is radial flow, which is straight. Over we, we talk about infinite acting radial flow for the straight line portion of the semi log graph. You see, this is pseudo steady state. Draw down, you see, as the this is an increasing um, difference in pressure. See, there is the linear flow regime. There is bilinear. There is well posted. So here, this one we know. This one, this is a unit slope. This is horizontal. This is the pressure derivative is equal to zero point five. So the flow regime patterns commonly observed in water data are radial, spherical, linear, bilinear, web storage, the steady state, steady state, dual porosity or permeability, and slope doubling. So 
we just take, um, I just take some of these flow periods one after the other. At this level, it's important that you are aware of these flow regimes and the um, power or at least the functionality of the pressure derivative type curves to identify this flow regime. So um, the first flow regime we're looking at is radial flow. So when the reservoir production is established, flow lines converge radially, you know, throughout your petroleum engineering study, as I've been talking about radial flow. In the reservoir, the pressure is a function of time and the distance to the well. So radial flow geometry is described as flow streams, uh, as flow stream lines converging into a circular cylinder. So radial flow is probably the most important flow regime for well test interpretation, and it's re recognized as an extended constant of flat trend on the derivative. You see, that's the red line here. And you see, it's usually, for infinite acting radial flow, usually occurs after the hump. Mm -hmm. So for homogeneous reservoirs, a, pre a pressure versus time, um, so it, it manifests as a straight line on the semi-log scales, you know, so a straight line on the semi-log scale. And of course, it is, it's usually inclined on the semi-log graph, but it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a horizontal line on the pressure derivative curve. So that's how you do. In fully completed wells, the cylinder may represent the portion of the well bore intersecting the entire formation. In partially penetrated wells or partially completed wells, radial flow may be restricted in any time only to a section of the flow thickness. Okay. So um, RF A to RF F uh, um, give us different um, scenarios where, radio fl where radial flow develops um, around the well. And this is what is shown here. B is full radial flow. This is partial radial flow. Um, this is pseudo radial flow where the near well bore region is fractured. This is radial flow to a horizontal well. And this is pseudo radial flow uh, which develops similar to what you have in vertical wells. And this is a radial flow near a ceiling fault. Of course, this is an image well. The, uh, you, you, uh, you remember that image wells are used to analyze um, distance to, to boundaries. Uh, one other flow regime which has been mentioned earlier is the spherical flow regime. And the spherical flow regime develops where you have partial penetration. Mm -hmm. Partial penetration before the bottom and top of boundaries. So the figure here gives the uh, an illustration of um, spherical flow. You know. And as you have seen, so this is, um, spherical flow um, on regular Cartesian units. This is not a primary concern right now, but the plot of pressure versus the reciprocal of the square root of time is actually uh, indicative of, spher of um, spherical flow. And, uh, which is represented by this, but for, for this at this level, what we're interested in is identifying the flow regimes in um, via the pressure derivative plot. So the, the cycle flow occurs when flow stream lines convert to a point, as you've seen there. So for the case of partial completion or partial penetration, the okay, no, this is this is a this is a further description of um, spherical flow, and then this is so, and probably this is the most important thing. The spherical flow regime in the lower 
layer is indicated by a negative half slope trend. So spherical flow on the uh, on the the federal derivative derivative plot is shown as a negative half slope trend. So note that the slope trend here is negative one over two. One other uh, flow regime is linear flow. So in any time before radial flow develops, uh, is established, you have the um, flow lines perpendicular to a fracture plane. The linear flow is um, very commonly forms where you have uh, an, uh, an infinite conductivity fra uh, fracture in the near bore region. Usually you have both linear and radial flow developing. Uh, on the typical, uh, so the plot of change in pressure versus the square root of um, time, you see this is similar to what you have for spherical flow. But on the, on the, um, on the, Pressure derivative float. It says flow uh, linear flow is exhibited in the deriv derivative as a positive half trend. So you see, for the for spherical flow is a negative half, but for linear flow it's the positive half trend. And these are different scenarios where um, linear flow could develop. One other is the bilinear, and for bilinear. When the pressure drop in the fracture plane is not negligible, a second linear flow regime could be established along the fracture extension. Um, in this course, we didn't really um, cover fracture the reservoirs, but this is a secondary trend. The, the, uh, no, no, what, what we are actually interested in is how from test data you can infer um, uh, the well bore dominated flow, um, well reservoir deterioritis, infinite active, um, infinite active radial flow, and boundary effects. So, for the bilinear flow, on the derivative, it's a positive quarter slope. I'm just mentioning this because I think this is um, one of the things I gave in uh, the tutorial set too. For well bore storage, this doesn't need to overflow. This has been uh, sp spoken about. It is a unit slope on the log log scale. For pseudo steady state, derivative of the flow regime appears as a also as a unit trend, similar to well bore storage. However, this is only the case if the unit slope occurs as the last observed trend during the drawdown test. Mm -hmm. Note that you cannot have to do a steady state before um, uh, the radial flow period. That, that, that would happen. For steady state, during the steady state flow, you know, the pressure does not change with time. It is, uh, you know, it is mathematically expressed as what you have here in reservoirs. The steady state flow period can only occur when, of course, the reservoir is completely recharged with a strong aquifer. In build up and follow up tests, a steeply foreign derivative may represent either, uh, so the steady state or steady state, that's for in a build up test. If you have the derivative dropping like that, it will be indicative of so steady state or steady state. And um, this is another flow regime, which is the dual porosity or dual permeability systems. This is where you have um, two different porosity networks, visual networks and a matrix, matrix network. And in this one, the derivative behavior is, so derivative behavior for the dual porosity system 
it may look like a valley trend, as you see. The 27, I think I have it somewhere. So the dual porosity of variability flow regime is used to determine the parameters associated with internal heterogeneity, interporosity, flow transparability, and all. So at this point, it's important for you to know why we use the advantages of using the um, pressure derivative curve and the flow regimes that can be distinguished using the pressure derivative curve. Of course, usually when we do this, we go with the simplest assumption that it's a vertical well, no weapon storage, no damage, no stimulation, homogeneous, not infinite. This is the very simple, this is the simplest case, but you know, usually your data will be influenced by well bore effects. And if you flow long enough, you have boundary effects. And of course, here, what, what, what is shown here is different things that can, can characterize your near web wall region. These are reservoir effects, these are boundary effects. So in the, in the, last, in the last few slides, these are different um, interpretations. I, and I'll, just, I'll, I'll run through them briefly. This is the scenario where you have web bus storage, of course, skin as the home there, and then this, is um, infinite acting radial flow. For the partial penetration, you will see this is where you have, this is spherical flow, where you have the negative half slope. This is the effect of a horizontal well. You see that before, um, this is infinite acting radial flow, before you have boundary effects, you're having like, so you're having like a second radial flow period here, and this is, um, the half slope for linear flow. You know, this is negative half for spherical, this is half for linear flow. And then this is the hump, which was talked about for the double porosity. This is indicative of a dual porosity system. And then um, you actually have, you see, this is, this is, um, falling down derivative, which is which can be seen on the um, for build up for closed systems. I see both whether it's for closed systems or open systems, on the build up, you are going to have a falling derivative. While for drawdown, for closed system, we are going to have a unit slope. And I think um, with this, you've been able to appreciate the different um, graphical techniques from the semi-log graphical analysis, um, type forms, and then the pressure derivative type forms.